with my dream. What's up, family and friends? Good afternoon and welcome to this live broadcast. How are you doing? It's a beautiful day. And you are beautiful. You are wonderful. So wherever you are, know that you and you yourself can make your life better. Yes, you. No God can do that. No imaginary God, no fictional Jesus. No God Almighty, no Jesus Almighty, no angel of God, no Satan, no demon can do anything for you in reality. Everyone that is defending God is defending the indefensible. In other words, they don't know what they are doing. Because if God is real, you don't need to defend God. If God is true, if Jesus is true, according to what they say or what they wrote in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Torah, or in their religious texts, in their holy texts, if that God is real, you wouldn't need to defend that God or speak for that God. You can only speak for the dead. You can only speak for the weak. You can only speak for ones who are unable to speak for themselves. So if that God exists, why are you who believe in that God being the one speaking for that God? Can't you see you are speaking for God? Prove that that God is dead. That God is weak. That God cannot do anything. So I titled this, What Can Your God Do? What Can Your God Do? I mock God daily. There's nothing wrong from a man, human being mocking God. Because human being made God. And there is nothing wrong from human being mocking God, especially when you believe your God can do anything. I mock that God daily by asking or by challenging that God, you that believe in that God, to call on that God to do anything for you. Even right now, call your God to show up here. Unless your God is dead, unless your God traveled, unless your God is sleeping, that he cannot show up. But if you say you are God is alive, if you say you are God is true, especially you say that God lives in you, whether it's by faith or by fake, however it is that you believe that God is alive, that God exists, that God can do anything, or that God can do all things, I want you, I challenge you to call on that God to show up here. If your God show up here and speak for himself, I will worship that God with all my life. In fact, wherever that God says I should go and die, I will go and die there for that God. Preaching that God there. And that's another proof you can see God does not exist because those that, that almighty God they worship. And they say that God sent his son who asked them to go and preach everywhere. But these people are not going everywhere preaching that God. They tell you they are buying private jet to enhance the work of God for the preaching of the gospel. They are not taking that private jet to anywhere to preach uh, everywhere, I mean. They are not going everywhere as the Bible commanded them. As they said, their God is all-powerful. If your God is all-powerful, you shouldn't be afraid of going anywhere to preach because your God will show up. But that God does not exist. That God Yahweh, that God Jehovah, that God Allah does not exist. And they cannot do anything 
what can your God do? Tell me one thing you are going to It's only abstract things, things that are not real. That's the only thing you can claim your God can do. Your God cannot do anything in reality. Nothing, nothing. Not even heal your sickness or your headache. You know, headache, you can go to any nearby chemist, any nearby store, over the counter, and you buy Tylenol, or Fensic, or, or Pengo, or, you know, any, any pen pill. You can just buy it, a dollar, or a few amount of money, boom, and you take it, you feel better. Your God cannot make you feel better when you are having headache. He cannot. So tell me what your God can do. The ball is in your court. You, the one that believe in that God, you are the one that's supposed to prove what that God can do. You, you are the one that's supposed to prove the existence of that God. You that is speaking for that God. Tell me what your God can do right now. Let your God do it. You say, time is coming. When your God will ask, tell me the time. I have my, it's 2.35 p.m. right here now. Tell me the time your God will act. Tell me the day your God will act. Give me a certain date. Not maybe, not someday. Someday is not a day of the week. One day is not a day of the week. You have to be specific. Tell me what your God can do and tell me wh when your God can do it. You say you don't know. Okay, you are not that God. Talk to that God. Your God supposed to know. If you don't know and your God don't know, that should show you that you don't know what you worship. Your God is useless in reality. Your God does not exist in reality. Your God only exists in the book. Your God only exists in your head. Your God only exists in your heart. But in reality, your God does not exist. Reality bites. And when reality bites, you find out your God cannot rescue you. You are owing rent. You are owing some debt. Your God can never, can never no pay that you are dead. They can never pay your rent. But we pray, oh God, touch somebody, touch somebody. To, why are you asking your God to touch somebody to favor you or to do anything for you? What, what, what is the work of your God? What is the work? Why do you believe in God that cannot do anything? Tell me what your God can do. Tell me. Tell us. You say, oh, the way I'm saying it, you are provoked. Oh, no, no. Okay, are you God? No. So talk to your God. If your God is real, if your God exists, whether in the sky or in your heart, let that God speak for himself. Any God you are speaking for is bad. Any God you are speaking for is an idol. Any God you are speaking for is dead. Any God you are speaking for is useless. And that's why you should think and wake up. Question your belief. You believe in God. Good and fine. Okay. Can you prove your belief? I, I don't need revelation to prove the existence of God. I don't need vision to prove the existence of God. I don't need dream to prove the existence of God. Don't tell me your dream. Oh, you saw God in the dream. You saw Jesus in the dream. Okay. I believe you saw them. That's your personal experience. It is called hearsay. When I hear it from you, it is called hearsay. It's not the truth. Prove it in reality. In reality, that's when I can see is the truth. Sin is believing for those who are believers. Don't stop at believing. See what you believe. They tell you your God can do this. Prove it. I mean, they tell you their God can do so, so. Let their God do it. Your God cannot do anything in reality. Yet you are running your mouth and you are hating your brothers and sisters. Killing your brothers and sisters for that belief in that God. Tell me what your God can do for you in reality. 
Not to me. Now, of course, I have proven to every believer that their God is dead. Their God cannot do anything to me. Their God cannot do anything for me. Their God cannot bless me. Their God cannot curse me. Because I'm above their God. I am a God killer. I kill God daily. Just I am doing right now. Your God is scared. That's why your God cannot show up here. So I am asking you, tell me what your God can do for you. You, 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 you. What can your God do for you? A God that cannot provide food for you. A God cannot that cannot provide money for you that god is useless you say no you are working to prove your faith no i mean your faith in god your faith in your belief is different from your faith in god you see how they split in salvation they preach to you they say that the salvation of god is free no it's not by you know it's not of works lest any man boast but he say work out your own salvation so you don't work out God's salvation, but they ask you to work out your own salvation, okay? You have faith in your belief. You have faith in yourself. Of course, you have to do show, you have to prove it. That's what I'm asking you. Prove it. You say when you pray, your God answers. Pray, let us see your God answer. He cannot answer. No, how about you have faith in that God? Where is the works? Where is the product? Where is the product? Where is the result of your faith in God? It's nowhere to show. Which is why he said, faith without works is dead. Believing in God without God working for you in time of sickness. Believing in God without God working for you in time of disease. Believing in God and that God not working for you in time of of, of 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 trouble in time of 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 evil in time of attack in time of kidnapping in time of death sudden death that god it shows that that god is dead and if that god is dead your faith in that god is equally dead and but if that god is real you will see you don't need faith if God is real, you don't need faith. You don't need to have faith in God if God is real. Because if God is real, God will be ahead of you. He will be ahead of you before your problem comes. He will solve that problem to show he loves you, to show he cares about you. That's what it means to have faith in God. If your faith in God cannot pay your bills, you need to shut up and stop believing. If your faith in God cannot provide for your children, cannot build a house for you, cannot give you what you need in the land of the living, that faith is dead. That faith is useless. But they tell you, no, you don't need to see it now. You will see it after you die on the judgment day. <laughs> what date is judgment day? They say... <laughs> What they tell you was Jesus. They said Jesus said nobody know the day he will come back again. Nobody know the hour. The uh, the Son of Man. He did not even say he himself. He said the Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? Is Jesus only the Son of Man? No. Did they, did they tell you nobody know the day of judgment? No. He said it's only the day of second coming of Jesus, as they said, which which is not true because Jesus never existed. But how about the day of judgment? I always ask you to use Jeremiah 33 verse 3 and John chapter 14, 14, uh, chapter 14 verse uh, 14. He said, Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. So God should show you when is the date for the judgment day you believe in. But it's men that created that. Then Jesus in John 14, 14 said, whatever you ask in his name, you will have it. Okay. Say so we do it. Let him tell you the day of judgment. But thousands of years has passed. Jesus has not shown up. And Jesus is not coming. And no one that have died in Christ <laughs> have come to tell those who are still living. Listen, uh, there is a place I am or it's heaven. Here I come. You know it's not real. You know it's not real. Yourself, if you can question your belief and tell yourself the truth, 
you will know it's not rebate. They keep lying to you to keep you in lie. They keep lying to you, telling you one day you don't know how God works. God works in mysterious way. You are not God. God is wiser than you. God, the way you can understand the way of God. If you cannot understand the way of God, then how can you know? How how are you? How how can how do you know you are worshiping God in the right way? It's, you say you worship God in spirit and in truth. How can you worship God in spirit and in truth when you are talking about God? Then talk about God in spirit and in truth. In spirit, you cannot see spirit. So let it be between you and your God. Is it not? That's exactly what Jesus said you should do, right? Then in truth, let us see the facts around you. Every truth must be based on facts. Without facts, that truth is a lie. That truth is fake. That truth is not truth. Truth must be based on fa on fa on facts, not on fiction, not on parables, not on fairy tales, not on folklore, not on prophecy, not on vision, not on dreams. No, on facts. When you put facts over faith, that's when you see the truth. No truth is permanent until it is proven with facts. So what can you are God who is almighty, who is all-knowing, who is everywhere? What can your God do? When you are not at home, can your God protect your home? Can your God stop the kidnappers from kidnapping your loved ones? Can your God stop your children from getting sick? Can your God stop the rapists from raping your, your, your children? Can your God do that when you are not there? But they taught you away from yourself. So you don't see yourself as the God and the goddess that is making things happen. That you can chase away criminals from your house without God. You can protect your home without God. You can provide for your children without God. You don't need God's help. It is God that needs your help. God is useless in reality. Tell me what your God can do. What can your God do? Don't tell me what is written in the Bible or in the Quran or in the Torah. Beyond your belief in what they said God has done. Beyond your belief in what they said God can do. With beyond your belief in the Bible. Beyond your belief in the Torah. Beyond your belief in the Quran. Beyond your belief in all those religious materials, religious wars, religious teachings. Tell me what your God can do. You can't. You cannot tell me. Because you don't know what you worship. You believe because you don't know. You have faith because you lack knowledge. But when you have knowledge, that's when you will set yourself free from all that religious garbage, religious bondage, religious lies. You deliver yourself, you free yourself because you know now that that thing is not true. You know now that a man cannot create a, a child or uh, anything with life in it without a woman. You now know that a woman was not created from a man's rib. You will not know that the God of the Bible is a lie. That the God of Quran is a lie. That the God of Torah is a lie. You will not know. And once you know, you cannot unknow what you know. Because you know it. You know it to be true, not you believe. Everyone that talk about God say they believe. They believe God. They believe in God. That's all they will say. They cannot say they know God. Because if you know God, show me the God. You say, no, God it has no color. That means God has no existence. If your God has no color, then how do you know about the God? How are you talking about God? You say you believe in Jesus. They say, show me Jesus. 
You said Jesus has no color, but you said Jesus is a Jew. <laughs> and sometimes they say Jesus is black. So regardless the color of your God, regardless the color of your Savior Jesus Christ, what can your God, what can your Jesus do in reality? Tell us, don't tell me he saved you from sin. Which sin? Fox sin. You're supposed to be shutting the mouth of anyone that is talking about sin. That the real sin is religion. Because religion taught you against you. Religion don't want you to think for yourself. And that's why people like us are asking you to think. We are not asking you to think like us. We are not asking you to think like us. No, we just want you to think. Think, 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 think and stop thinking. When an adult begins to speak about imaginary being, that adult is thinking. When an adult begins to brag about the almightiness, almightiness of their God, you know that's thinking. I said to somebody yesterday, do you know what it means to say that God is almighty? He said, I never tell, I never think it that way. I never I never think it that way. Of course, think. You say your God is almighty. You know what it means to be almighty? Do you understand that word, almighty? In other words, that God is unlimited. You cannot limit that God. You cannot tell me that it is my sin that is stopping that God from doing anything. No, you cannot. You cannot tell me that it is people's error or what people have done that chase away that God. Look at your life, look at your history, look at your people and, and see that whatever God they have been believing in, that God is a failure. That God is useless in reality. Africans, that God you say, believe you worship, that God you believe you serve, that God you believe in, that God you say exists, whether it's Chukwakika Biyama, Elohim, Allah, Yahweh, Je Jehovah, whatever name you call that God, or whatever you call that God, or whatever that God is, what has that God done for your people? It is your people that are giving that God life. It is your people that claiming that God has power, but that God, that God has not shown up in their time of need to help them. When the evil people attacked, their God did not show up. When the evil people came against them, their God did not show up. So whether it's foreign God or domestic God, I don't give a fuck about that God because that God is useless in reality. That God has not helped my people. That God has not helped me. And that, you see, I'm driving to work. I am the one going to work. And you're telling me after I suffer, since Saturday I've been doing 16, 16 hours, denying myself good sleep, and after you will tell me that God has blessed me. Fuck that God. My money you tell me is God's money. Fuck that God. You ask me to give you the money and the God will bless me. Fuck that God. God didn't give me any. If God gave, gave, gave me money, I will give it to you. But if God didn't give it to me, I spend it as I want. I give it to whoever I want to give it to. Without feeling any guilt for not giving to you or to your God or to your religion because it is mine i can do anything i want with what is mine even my life it is my life it is not god's life it is not jesus life it is my life so let us stop following the lies they taught us let us tell ourselves the truth and they live up to it it is time you question your belief question your faith prove your faith and follow the factual truth